Okay, so the main goal of this webinar is to raise awareness of hemlock woolly adelgid or HWA. An invasive forest pest that is killing our hemlock trees. It is our hope that the information you learned today will help you to recognize and report signs of HWA. I'd also like to note that we will provide a follow up email with a link to this recording, the slides, and related resources within the next couple of days. But first things first, if you wouldn't mind in the chat box, just putting in there. Um, if you if your um, hemlock ID is a little a little rusty, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to ID hemlocks, okay. So hemlocks are beautiful conifers. Their bark is rough, furrowed, brown when it's younger, and are more reddish as as it ages. The foliage is lacy and feathery. feathery. And the needles are short, flat, and a shiny dark green color. They have rounded tips and distinct white stripes on their underside. The needles grow along each side of the branch and are slightly offset each other, which you can see in the little picture here on the right-hand side. Hemlock cones are a good identifying factor as they are smaller than most other conifers. Cones have rounded scales. When the cones are young, the scales are closed and have a bluish green color. And as the cones mature, the scales open up and the cones turn a light brown color. So that's how you can ID a hemlock tree. But why should you even care about hemlocks? What makes them so special? Well, hemlocks are a foundation species, meaning they fill a unique niche that isn't filled by any other conifer in New York. They thrive in shady spaces and their needles are specially adapted to pick up the smallest amount of sun in the canopy. They are often found growing in north facing slopes and gorges and also in low lying shady areas. Hemlock support the food web. Hemlock canopy provides a stable microclimate throughout the year that provides shelter and food for over 400 forest species. Hemlocks also provide many eco services for people and nature. For example, they help regulate water levels and keep water clean and cool. This is especially important for freshwater stream fish like trout. So if you're a fisherman, you really want to help protect those hemlocks to keep our streams nice and cool. So hemlock woolly adelgid or HWA is an invasive sap sucking pest that has caused massive hemlock loss in Eastern United States. The biotype of HWA that is in Eastern US originated in Southern Japan. It was first introduced to the United States in Virginia via infected nursery stock imported from Japan back in the 1900s. Because HWA has no natural predators that exist along the East Coast, it has been able to spread killing Eastern and Carolina hemlock tree species and devastating our forests along the way. <clears throat> the insect is no larger than the size of a sesame seed, growing about eight millimeters in length. Do you see these tiny little threads that are coming off the bottom of this um, insect here? This is a microscope. Um, image of hemlock woolly adelgid. So these long threads here that hang off of the insect's body, these are the mouth parts that HWA uses to insert into the tissue of hemlock twigs, and they use that to feed. This causes damage to the tissue and eventually the tree dies over time. HWA arrived in New York in the 1980s in Long Island in the lower Hudson regions and has since spread to other parts of the state. As you can see from this map, the St. Lawrence Eastern Lake Ontario or Slilo region is the only region in the state to not have detected HWA. However, HWA infestations are bordering our region. This year, HWA was detected for the second time in the Adirondack Park along Lake George. And there are other infestations in Cayuga and Onondaga counties that are not too far from the Slilo region. HWA can be easily spread by birds or even high winds, but most often it's people who have caused the insect to become widespread and infested nursery stock is the main mode of introduction. 
That is why it's so important to get your nursery stock from local growers. So the Tug Hill and the Adirondack region, it holds over 61% of New York's hemlock forests. That's a lot of trees. Being the third most common tree species in New York, it is easy to take our hemlocks for granted, but it would take years for our forests to recuperate if we lost our hemlock trees. And the Tug Hill region right here is the gem of the St. Lawrence Eastern Lake Ontario region. So this is what a forest infested with HWA looks like, miles of gray skeleton trees. HWA killed almost all of the hemlocks in the Southern Appalachian mountain range. We don't want our forest to look like this. So we have to be proactive about conservation efforts and continue to survey for HWA. It takes about four to 20 years for HWA to kill a hemlock tree. Infested trees die more quickly in areas where it is susceptible to drought, poor growing conditions, warmer winter temperatures or other tree pests. Treatments include chemical injections or basal bark and soil applications. There are also approved biocontrol, biocontrol laracobius beetles and leucobius silverflies that are being field tested in um, New York State. But outside of treatment options, one of the biggest ways to protect hemlocks from HWA is to keep an eye out for signs of infestation and to report suspected findings. And even report when you don't find something. Because like I said, there's a lot of hemlocks out there and only so many people able to go look for it. So we wanna know if you don't find something too, so we can kind of rule out areas or strategize our early detection efforts out there. So you can help by simply taking a hike and checking for signs of an infestation. And I'm gonna show you what you need to look for next. <clears throat> so although HWA is a tiny insect, its most notorious characteristics make it easier to spot with the naked eye. During the fall and the winter months, HWA secretes a white woolly mass around its body, which is where it gets its name. The mass helps shield the insect from the cold and serves as a nest to lay eggs in the spring. In upstate New York, these masses are best spotted between November and March. So right now, starting now is like the best time to go out. <clears throat> when you approach a hemlock tree, you want to check the underside of the branches. When I go, I just stand right underneath the branches if I can, or I grab a branch and I turn it around and I pretty much stick my face in it. Because <laughs> you gotta look, you gotta look at the underside of the branch. Um, and you want to look, take a close look along the branch where the needles connect to the twig. This is where HWA inserts those mouth parts I showed you earlier, and it stays there and feeds until the spring. So you're not going to see it anywhere else other than right there where the needle connects right to the twig. There are many critters that like to use hemlocks for food and shelter, so you may encounter some stuff that you might think is hemlock woolly delgid, but actually isn't. So I'm going to show you a few examples. We don't want you getting too excited and sending us a bunch of pictures um, of H what is HWA if it really isn't. Okay, so here we have HWA versus elongate hemlock scale. So if you come across needles that appear to have like a waxy scale on it, you might have found another invasive pest called the long gate hemlock scale. Unlike HWA, the white waxy mass um, won't be located on the branch, but rather on the needles. Some other lookalikes include spider eggs, which may have a woolly appearance, but are often much larger than HWA and can be found random randomly placed on the tree limbs, not necessarily right where the branch and the needle connect. Uh, if you see brown needles stuck together with white silk, you are likely seeing damage from a native needle miner. This is the little larva here. They'll actually pluck the needles and stick them together with silk and make a little nest out of them. Um, but the needles are, are removed from the twig and they, they've turned brown from being removed from the twig. Um, also, snow might trick your eye, bird poop <laughs> are also things that you might see, um, pine sap, um, and then also uh, oak 
skeletonizer cocoons, which is a cocoon laid by a native moth. Um, and they could be on anything, uh, any part of the tree really, um, but they are white. So it might catch your eye and you might think that you might be seeing HWA. Also, <clears throat> other than white woolly masses, signs of HWA include lack of bright green growth at the tips of branches in the spring. So circled here is just this lime green, bright, bright lime green color. That is an indicator of a good, healthy tree. Um, so in the spring, if you see a tree that doesn't have that, you might wanna take a, take a closer look at that. Also, if you see hemlocks that have developed a pale grayish cast um, that have like significant crown dieback or lots of dead branches, that's another indicator. So if you are a fisherman or a boater, keep an eye out for hemlocks along the shoreline displaying these signs. So if you think you have found HWA, be sure to take a clear photo of the white woolly masses or the other signs that you encounter that have made you suspicious. Uh, be sure to include a coin or something for scale. It also helps to put something in the background like your hand to help the camera focus. Also note intersecting roads, landmarks, or if you can record uh, GPS coordinates so that the infestation can be found again for confirmation and management. The best way to report observations is by using IMAP invasives, which is an online invasive species observation database used by community scientists and professionals across the state. To report using IMAP, you have to set up a free account at imapinvasives.org. To use the app, you have to download it to your mobile device, or you can use the desktop version on your computer. You can also email or call the DEC Forest Pest Health Hotline uh, to make reports. This info will also be in a follow-up email, so don't worry if you don't get it jotted down in time. So now that you know what to look for, I'd like to invite you to participate in a virtual hike challenge aimed to get you out on some trails looking for HWA. I just need to switch my screen share to share this with you. I guess it needs to load. Hi, Wiley. Welcome. You're just in time for the virtual hike challenge. <laughs> um, Thanks, Mitch. Would you kindly let me know if you see the web, web page on the yes. screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, excellent. So this is the sleloinvasives.org website where the virtual hike challenge is featured. Um, you can find this page just by going to sleloinvasives.org virtual hike challenge, or if you go to our website and just scroll down to the bottom of the front page, um, you, you'll see it there and you can click on it and it opens this, this page up. So to better help us quantify the challenge, you can fill out this short little form that's at the top of the page if you plan to participate. And to participate, it's real simple. You just take a hike, check hem hemlock trees for signs of HWA, and then share a photo of your experience on Facebook using the hashtag virtual hike challenge in the post so I can find it. Those who follow these steps will be randomly selected and given cool hats, shirts, pins, and other cool prizes. I don't know if um, Nick and Wiley, if you had some examples of uh, the prizes handy that you could show everybody just to kind of let them check it out. Um, if you don't, that's fine too. We can show them later. <clears throat> I do have some hats that say uh, Black River Outdoor Education Program that we're uh, donating, but I don't have any with me right now, so. Have right here, I meant to grab it earlier. There we go. All right, so the goodies that Slilo will be giving out to folks who participate are our official logo pins. I don't know if you can see that. It's got our logo on it. That's just one example of um, some of the swaggy items that you'll get for participating. 
All right, so the challenge is foco focused in the Slilo region, because remember how earlier I said that we haven't, the Slilo region is the only region in New York that hasn't detected the presence of HWA and that it's encroaching on our area. Uh, so we're focusing the challenge in the Slilo region, which is outlined here on this um, Google map um, in green here. Um, and what we've done is to make it easier for you to find um, hemlocks to check, we've showcased some local public trails that have low lying hemlocks located right near the path, which can be uh, selected on this map. So just to give you an example here, you can click on these little hiker icons and it'll open up um, some information here where you can um, go, go to the website of the Tug Hill Tomorrow Land Trust. This is their trail, the Joseph Blake Wildlife Sanctuary. You can click on the images. There's a nice map here that explains what trail to take and um, outlines the hemlock forest there. So you know like where you can stop and check for hemlock trees. And then there's just some really nice pictures of the trail system that you can also explore. So that's what each of those little um, hiker icons open up for you. The website also provides just basic information, the information that I went over with you today, uh, you know, for the white woolly masses, what to do if you find it and so on and so forth. The importance of hemlock trees <clears throat> is all there. And then also it shows you uh, who is hosting the virtual hike challenge. And as you can see, We've got Indian River Lakes Conservancy and also the Brea um, program here, our Black River program here, and they are actually going to be taking a deeper dive into some of the trails that are part of the virtual hike challenge next. Questions. Uh, now would be a good time to, to ask them before we do a deeper dive into uh, the different trails and organizations that are part of this. Yeah, my sister's work. Yeah, um, invasive for hemlock trees. Uh, invasive for hemlock. Okay, uh, use your chat box. And if you have any questions uh, for Megan about hemlock. Or okay. about the organization in general. And I will leave it up to Megan. So, yeah, someone one really loud. I don't know who's got the yeah. background going on. Oh, there we go. All right. So, oh. okay. So, all right, Frank, that's a good question. You can still participate by just going to the web page. And signing up where I showed earlier, like where you put your name and stuff in there. If you just put your name in there, then I'll know you participated. Um, the reason why we did it on Facebook is because because of COVID, really. Usually during this time, Slilo hosts a series of um, walk and talks. And since we're not able to do that, this was our way of just trying to get folks out there and engaging on the trails and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on here and let Wiley with the Indian River Lakes Conservancy go ahead and take remote control here. Am I not sharing my screen? Oh, okay. Wiley, I'm gonna give you remote control. Just one second. Okay. All right, you should be good to go, Wiley. Excellent. Thanks, Megan. I'll give it a shot. Uh, hello, everybody. Great to see you all. Thanks for participating. Uh, it's a great time to get out um, on the trails. Uh, currently in northern Jefferson County, we do not have any snow on the ground. So I'll take every week without snow we can get. So hopefully it'll get us through to the uh, summer a little better, to the, to the spring season at least. I am um, trying to see my where to flip the screen here, Megan. There we go. Well, ah, okay. Ah, okay, there we go. So uh, the Indian River Lakes Conservancy, we currently protect about 2,500 acres uh, in the Indian water, River watershed. Uh, we have 
uh, over 20 miles of trail on three public access preserves. Take you through each one of our preserves. Try to flip the screen here. Okay, uh, we have three preserves, as I said, we have Grand Lake uh, Reserve in Theresa, New York. Uh, it's about uh, 1,200 acres and has about uh, seven miles of trail. Uh, we have Redwood Hill Preserve here where our office is in Redwood, New York. Uh, we have uh, that a uh, little less than uh, two miles of trail, about half of which is uh, all access, ADA accessible. And then our third public access preserve is our most southern preserve in the headwaters region of the Indian River. Uh, which is our Baker Woods, Woods Preserve, uh, and that's about uh, 500 acres. Okay, Redwood Hill Preserve, you can see here, uh, overlooks Butterfield Lake. Um, it is the, uh, the home of our Trailside Learning Center. You can see there uh, in the right side of your screen, uh, during the summer months, we hold uh, seminars uh, there. We call it our summer science series, uh, which we bring in um, experts and partners like SLEWO and um, other natural resources experts to talk about our natural world so that we can become better stewards of our environment. Uh, moving on to Baker Woods Preserve. Uh, this is down in uh, the Natural Bridge area. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity to get out on snowshoes or cross-country skis this winter. Uh, we have very large hemlock trees on this uh, preserve, uh, definitely old growth type. So it's uh, worth venturing out uh, to check them out and, and see what you can see regarding the HWA. Hopefully uh, none will be reported. Uh, another unique aspect of this preserve is it actually is the only public access to the upper reaches of the Indian River uh, for canoe. Uh, for canoe or paddle or kayak paddling. Uh, so you can paddle up in the uh, headwaters above the preserve here. And you can also access uh, our, new, our newest parcel that we've added to the conservancy, uh, the uh, 250 acres on the south side of the river uh, that uh, our trail stewards down there, uh, Matt and Linda Carney, have just done a great job of, uh, of, uh, of, of stewarding that property. It's a very enjoyable experience, I encourage uh, everyone to get out there and check that out. Our third uh, public access reserve is Grand Lake Reserve. Uh, it's located uh, between uh, Butterfield and Grass Lake. You can actually hike from lake to lake uh, uh, on the seven miles of trail there. Uh, we've done some uh, golden wing warbler restoration work there. There's some interpretive signs uh, as you venture in uh, on the Butterfield Lake side. And this is definitely our most austere preserve, uh, it's about 1,200 acres and, and offers uh, seven miles of trail. At IRLC, we have a stewardship for life concert concept and we're really approaching our youngest generation to teach them how to assess their environment while they're out recreating and enjoying it. Much, much of what we are all interested in to hear today that as we take this hike challenge uh, how we can better steward our environment by monitoring, actively monitoring uh, for invasive species infestations. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a hiker give us a call and they said, all of a sudden, this grass and weeds are growing where they've never grown before on, on our Grand Lake Reserve. And, and we got to wondering why, and, and this person kept going back. And finally, he put, put it all together as so we had a massive tent caterpillar infestation. They're not invasive. Uh, but they were uh, killing a lot of our maple trees, allowing sunlight to penetrate to the forest floor. And all of a sudden we found that we were having to do uh, weed eating to keep the trail open uh, where we never had had to do that before. And this is a perfect example of active stewardship. And we all can be active trail stewards as we get out and hike around up here through the North Country. And as you become familiar with your trails, you can begin to see changes over time. And then it's up to us to try to determine what is causing those changes. Is it because of an invasive species? Is it perhaps due to climate change? 
due to erosion, what it could be in any number of things, but as active stewards, we have to continuously be monitoring and noting uh, our environment, especially what we're familiar with. So here you see several kids learning about protecting watersheds uh, using the watershed model, about assessing stream health by, uh, by determining what type of uh, macroinvertebrates uh, are, are living in the stream and if the stream's healthy in that respect. In the lower right, you can see we're teaching uh, our high school kids in our project World uh, protectors of, of water and habitat in the Indian River Lakes Club uh, about uh, invasive species. Obviously that was in the summer. Uh, do it, teaching them about uh, HWA and how to monitor for that, uh, but we're still going through uh, the procedures with them. So, so we're all about stewardship, stewardship for life, teaching at a young age and developing um, uh, skills to continue. And we hope that uh, everybody learned something uh, from Megan's presentation today. And we definitely hope to see you out on our trails to complete this challenge. So it's great to see everybody. Thanks, Megan. Any is questions? There, yep. Yeah, I was going to say, does anyone have any questions um, about the Indian River Lakes Conservancy or um, the different preserves that we have? Um, any events that we do? You can use your chat box um, or you can unmute and talk to us if you want to ask your question out loud. By a show of hands, how many people have been out on the Indian River Lakes trails before? Just curious. It looks like some really beautiful land. I look forward to trying to get up there and, and uh, looking at it, checking it out. And the hemlocks are really easy to find on these trails too. I was really impressed with, is it the Baker Woods Preserve, um, Wiley, that we did Project Whirl on? Yeah, yeah, that was, you. the trail is named the Hemlock Trail. <laughs> and there's a good reason for it because it was like being in Fern Gully. It was just moss and hemlocks everywhere. It was just remarkably beautiful. And and there's, some, there's some of the biggest hemlocks I've seen in, in this part of, uh, of the world for sure. So very it's impressive. Right in your backyard too. I mean like yeah. natural bridge area is really, I mean it's not very far to get there at least from where I live. Anyway and it's definitely worth the trip. It's a beautiful hike and then on the other side, I forget the name of it Wiley, the other side where the trailhead is you can walk in and there's a little pollinator garden there and then a, is there a lake or a pond uh that's oh. the indian river <laughs> it's the what indian river oh it's the indian river okay yes. cool yeah i didn't make it to the water but i just remember um seeing a map and stuff for it so and then isn't there like a long trail that goes around around or along the river that's really nice to walk over there too that's correct yeah, I highly suggest if you haven't been to Baker Woods yet, go. I, I definitely want to go back. And I thought it would be a pretty easy hike to do with my four-year-old daughter, too. So I don't know if there's any mama bears on the line. I know Heidi's got a little one. And her and I are always flirting with the idea of let's get together and bring the kids on hikes. I think that we should do that one together. I think that that would be a really nice one to do. Yeah, the first time I took her down there, I put her on the train. Like, let's go this way and she turned around and was <laughs> going the other way so it's gotten a little easier as she's gotten older but yeah baker woods is beautiful you guys get out there send us photos we'd like to see people enjoying the land so excellent um yeah we got a little message from cooper cooper is another one of our volunteers um who's been doing some stewardship with us um that he enjoys that trail too so um if Nobody has any questions. Um, Nick, we are excited to hear uh, about your trail system and your organization as well. So, go to Nick. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Heidi. Uh, let's see here. I think. Okay, here we go. Pause. So yeah, my name is Nick Heintz and I work with the Black River Environmental Improvement Association. Um, we have about 70 kilometers of groomed trails for cross country skiing. It's utilized throughout the winter. And in the non-winter months, those same trails are used for hiking and biking. Um, there's mostly three locations and those are Egypt Road, Jackson Hill and the Canal Trail. 
And you can find maps for those on our website, which we'll get to in a minute. And on those properties, there's warming huts as well. There's one on Egypt Road, there's one on Jackson Hill, and the Boonville Search and Rescue maintains a warming hut at the trailhead of the canal trail. So we offer parking lots, some bathroom facilities, and these are available um, at no cost to the public. So this uh, next slide in the upper left shows the warming hut on Egypt Road. And there's a warming hut on um, Jackson Hill that's in the upper right here. It's a Telemark warming hut. And below that is a picture inside the Telemark warming hut. Uh, I mentioned before that Boonville Search and Rescue um, is at the trailhead of the Canal Trail, which is in um, Boonville. And it's located right near the Tops Plaza, if you're familiar with that. And you can also find some good information when they're offering um, snowshoe and ski rentals on their Facebook page. It's also pretty much the best place to try to contact them. But they handle all of the ski rentals and snowshoes. And in the bottom left-hand corner is an example of um, some of the bathroom facilities that we offer as well. Uh, sister program to BRIA is the Black River Outdoor Education Program that was formed in 2009. And their mission is essentially to create environmental stewards out of the area youth and at the same time teaching healthy lifelong activities um, in the outdoors. We average about 10,000 student visits a year from the surrounding 11 counties. And we've had nearly 200 different schools from those 11 counties come to visit. In 11 years, we've had about 120,000 student visits. And the students come to participate in kayaking, mountain biking, hiking, and snowshoeing and cross country skiing. And all of those activities take place on the Bria property. You can find some more information about Bria. Um, you can get trail maps. You can find out about trail conditions when we're grooming the trails for cross country skiing. And you also have the chance to check out our live webcam to uh, really check out the conditions. I was looking at it today and it looks like we have about three inches of snow up there. And I also saw some tracks. So it looks like some skiers have been out. Also probably, I think I saw some snowshoe tracks out there as well. And that live webcam is pictured right at the um, site of our Egypt Road warming hut. So we encourage people to check that out. You can follow Bria on Facebook and also Bro Up on Facebook. And you can sign up for trail updates by emailing uh, trailupdates at brmco.org. You can check out the Bro Up website for some instructional videos and schools that might be interested in visiting us can find out more information there as well. Um, if you decide to come check out some of the trails, you'll find signs that uh, will indicate where parking is and you sort of just have an idea of what some of the trails look like here. And one of the maps that you can find on our website, this is Egypt Road. Um, you'll have to stay tuned for some that are more up to date, um, but there's quite a bit of hemlock on this map in particular. Uh, you'll notice one section is, is um, circled in red, but all throughout the gully trail, there's the Creek, Val uh, Creek View Trail at the bottom of the screen that goes along the Alder Creek Gorge. That's really beautiful trails down there and it's just surrounded by hemlock trees with uh, the beautiful Alder Creek at the in the bottom of that gorge. And then even on top of there on the Moss Trail on the um, shortcut trail, it all has quite a bit of hemlock throughout there. So those would be some good places to check out. And you also notice on that map is the location of one of the warming huts, the Egypt Road warming hut, and that'll be open all winter long with a fire going. So take advantage of that. 
Well, uh, one of our second locations is Jackson Hill. Um, Into the Woods Trail has quite a bit of hemlock on it. And also the um, Adirondack Field Trail, right when you cross the, um, the road from the Easy Loop, there's quite a few hemlock throughout there. Uh, there's a assortment of trail difficulties all on these uh, in this location. And this is, uh, it's a great place. So I encourage you to check that out as well. <clears throat> This slide was put together by, I think, Frank, Megan, you can correct me on that, but mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the Jackson Hill trail system is located closely to the state forest land, which I believe you guys are trying, uh, encouraging people to check out and uh, look for the woolly adelgid there. Um, but I haven't really been on that land very much, so I'm not too familiar with it. Frank is on the line too. Um, he can speak at the end or now he can chime in and let folks know uh, where the hemlocks are located on this trail. Frank, are you uh, there? Hi, Megan, this is Frank. Hey, Frank. Uh, the two red uh, icons there are, uh, uh, one is the entrance to the, I think they call it Fire Road, which is right near uh, the Bria trails. And the second icon down there is a, uh, very very large hemlock stand uh, i haven't yet gone down around that uh, dog leg down at the bottom near uh, uh, the other creek there but i understand there's a lot of hemlocks down there that need surveying uh, preferably after hunting season mm. yeah frank is one of slalo's um, conservation volunteers and he is available and interested in taking small groups um, practicing uh, you know COVID safety precautions of course um, on some of these trails he visits he visits them quite fre frequently and he's working um, on creating some maps for us uh, that that highlight where the hemlocks are located uh, on these trails that we're featuring for this uh, virtual hike challenge so thank you Frank for, for helping out with that. I will be including his contact information in the follow-up email, just to let everybody know. Nick, you can take it back. Uh, yeah. So I would um, mostly encourage people to come and check out the Bria trails. Um, we're looking forward to a big winter coming up. Hopefully we'll get a bunch of snow and our trails will be in great condition. Um, I do encourage you to sign up for the trail updates and mostly you'll receive email notifications when we're out grooming or before or shortly after the trails have been freshly groomed. And they'll likely um, be groomed before weekends. So unless we get dumped on in the middle of the week, sometimes you can expect fresh grooming on like Thursdays or Fridays in preparation for when we get the most visitors, which is on the weekends. So stay tuned for that. And that's it for me. Thanks, Nick. Heidi, did you want to say anything? No, I was just going to see if anyone um, had questions for Nick. I actually do. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah. And and forgive me if you said this, I may have missed it, but it's my understanding that you can get equipment. Is it only through that rescue squad that you mentioned? Correct, yep. So, okay. Right now, the Boonville Search and Rescue, I haven't communicated with them. Their normal plans are to be open every weekend and also when school's on holidays. Um, and I'm going to assume that they're going to continue doing that, but I'm sure they'll be taking some extra precautions to follow COVID um, guidelines. So I would encourage you to check up on their Facebook pages. And our website also has a phone number that you can call them and uh, ask questions. So um, for people that are interested in borrowing skis, they, they usually rent skis for a $5 donation. 
which is nothing. And, you know, you can uh, take them and ski right on the canal trail right there, or you can go and bring them up to one of the other campuses like Jackson Hill or Egypt Road and use your skis there that you borrow from them. So that's uh, something nice to check out for all sorts of families. Are there also snowshoes like for children, like smaller size? Yep, they have equipment for, for everybody, all ages, skis and snowshoes. And what about like summertime equipment? I'm just really, I, I'm very impressed that there's equipment available. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna know, like you have bikes? Like no. how, how deep does this go? <laughs> we don't have bikes available now, no. Okay. Well, that's, that's very amazing that you have all that equipment available. Cause I mean, that's just like one of those barriers taken down where people might think, oh, well, you know, I would go, but I don't have snowshoes or I would go, but I don't have cross country skis. So oh, yeah. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> that's great. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that I think is worth mentioning, um, Wiley and Heidi, uh, you do have that fantastic um, December 11th event going on right where it's like a story and people can t hike the trail would you mind i think that might be a good a good thing to mention to this group you can keep an eye out for hemlock lily adelgid while you're out there too bring bring some black lights <laughs> a little black light flashlight <laughs> shine yeah. it up on the needles <laughs> that's a great idea um and, and yes on that trail we do have hemlocks that are um actually i think we decorated one as our as our christmas holiday tree last year but um yeah december 11th starts our story walk so if you've never heard what, about a story walk basically you take a book and you deconstruct the pages and put them on signs all along the trail so you start with page one and then you take a little walk and then you read page two um and take a little walk until you get to the end of it and the book we're doing is the night tree it's about um it's about all sorts of animals coming and decorating the tree at night. So you can bring a natural, um, you know, either bird feeder or ornament to come and decorate the tree with your family. So um, a safe event, but something festive. So yeah, please come. Excellent. Looks like there's some questions coming up in this chat box here. Trying to find it. It's disappeared on me. Sorry, Anne. We also, I'll also plug our, um, our next webinar really quickly too. Um, we have Professor Diana White, who um, Megan actually introduced me to. Um, she uh, has done research with Clarkson University on Eurasian water milfoil, um, which we all know is an invasive um, around our lakes in our area. Um, so she is doing a webinar with us on uh, January 16th. Um, and I'm very excited to uh, hear about her research and what she's learned over the last couple of years. So please join us for that too. Okay, and we will we will post all of these upcoming events in a follow up email too. So it's okay if you didn't get everything written down. Everything that was mentioned today. Um, will be in a follow-up email for you for convenience. And I'd also like to note, we did talk a lot about, hey, go on these trails, look for Hemlock Willie Adelgid. But I do wanna note that, you know, nature knows no boundaries. Hemlock Willie Adelgid is only gonna be in the forest. Um, there are hemlocks in urban areas too. Um, I just wanna bring that to your attention. You know, if you're walking down the street, even in Watertown or just whatever city you live in, there might be some hemlocks there. Uh, take a take a closer look and check it out. Um, and might even be more apt to find it in an urban setting, considering that that tree was likely planted by people rather than planted by nature. Um, and and as mentioned earlier, people um, are a culprit for spreading this. And uh, the biggest way is through nursery stock. So uh, do keep your eyes peeled in urban settings in addition to uh, these beautiful trails that we've mentioned for you today. And Megan, in regards to uh, other events, you know, we hope to host some as well, where we all, where we like to make um, equipment available. Um, in the non-winter months, we may have events where um, we make bicycles available. And this, usually in the winter, we team up with a few different yeah. organizations. 
I see Elaine Hage there. She often uh, puts together a nice event at one of our campuses where we make equipment available with guides and everything. And that's another reason I encourage people to sign up for our trail updates because when things like that do happen, we'll be sure to uh, let people know to try to get people to show up. So I, I encourage you all to uh, sign up and keep an ear, keep an ear out. I noticed we also have a question from Ash Fletcher asking where the story walk is. So Heidi, did you want to say where, um, give more details on that? Yeah, so that will be held at the Redwood Hill Preserve um, in Redwood, New York. So it's just right next to our offices, but you can Google Redwood Hill Preserve and you'll, uh, you'll get the right address as well. Redwood Hill Preserve? Sorry, what's that, Nick? You said Redwood Hill Preserve. That's right, yeah. It's a beautiful area. They have a very nice um, owl-shaped round structure. It's got this big owl on one side, and they have they have their conferences out there and education events out there. It's a beautiful space if you haven't been out there before. <laughs> With a nice view of, uh, is it Butterfield Lake, Wiley? Yeah, big porch or deck area where you can sit down and just gaze upon the, the water there. We also want to go loop there. I don't know why we probably covered it. It's um, ADA accessible. So you can also bring a stroller there, which is great for mom. But um, yeah, if you, um, you can do all the first loop very easily. It's a very easy walk. So. Is there a composting toilet there too? Or am I remembering that wrong? Yep. You guys are so fancy out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think you even have a boot brush station there too, don't you? Or you're going to be getting one anyway. <laughs> You've got a gravel path, so pretty much good there. But <laughs> yeah, we need some stewardship volunteers. Hint, hint. If anyone's interested in helping, yeah, Slilo does have a, a boot brush station that you can install. You know, if we could get it out there. Yeah, I did want to say something too. That is a good segue. I just wanted to say thank you because I see a lot of faces of people on here that are involved with stewardship in one organization or another or sometimes multiple organizations. Um, so yeah, we couldn't do it without you. And we're always looking for new volunteers. And um, yeah, I guess that's a, heart, a heartfelt thing. thank you to all the people. It's so great to see what 80 people signed up that care about our hemlock trees. Like, that's awesome, so. Yeah. <clears throat> No, yeah, well, we'll be wrapping up here. Um, I'm just looking on the line here and I'm noticing, r recognizing some names. I know that there are some uh, landowners out there. So, um, you know, being a landowner, I highly encourage you to check out the Hemlock Initiatives website uh, for, for preparing for Hemlock Willie Adelgid. And I will send resources to you in an email. Uh, they have an excellent uh, Hemlock prioritization tool that you can use to to, to strategize and plan for the arrival of Hemlock Willie Adelgid. And they also have all the information you'd ever want to know about how to control it, biocontrol, chemical control, anything like that. So check that out. And um, again, I'll send that out as a resource to folks. <clears throat> but that's all we have for you today. Thank you again for coming. And we hope to see some people on Facebook with uh, the virtual hike challenge. We have prizes to hand out. Um, when you do the challenge, it does you don't necessarily have to take a picture of uh, the branch. I mean, if you find Hemlock Willie Adelja, please do you know follow the steps I mentioned earlier and let the DEC know and send them a picture. But for the challenge, you could just do a picture of the trailhead, a selfie, um, you know, you enjoying the trail. The big thing is just getting you out there and um, sharing that hashtag. So I can find the post and um, send you a prize. Thanks for joining. And one other uh, thing I noticed, Megan, we had a question about will this meeting be available, but, and you mentioned before you're recording it, correct? Yep, it's being recorded and everything's gonna come out in a nice little email for you in the next few days. So just check your inbox. Um, I have everybody's email, so it'll be coming to you um, at the very latest by Monday or Tuesday. Excellent. <clears throat>
<clears throat> thanks again for coming and that concludes our webinar for today we hope to see you out in the trails thanks for putting it together megan great job yeah, yeah thanks for collaborating nice to see you all bye thanks megan bye thanks everyone